I know like everybody idolizes us and thinks that we're perfect, but sometimes trans people make mistakes. Hi, I'm B, and this is my YouTube channel. I talk mostly about writing, books, Warhammer, Star Trek, and the like, but sometimes I make videos about being trans. That's actually how this channel started, and that's what I'm doing today. Earlier this year in June, I actually put out a video stating that I planned to stop testosterone and go on estrogen. I'm transmasculine, for those of you who don't know, but I'm actually going back on that decision, and I figured I'd make a video to kind of explain why? Sometimes when medication really works, we think we don't need it anymore. Sometimes we ascribe perceived side effects to medication when in actuality the effect is related to something else entirely. And regardless of the cause, those maladies can be remedied by adjusting treatment protocol or lifestyle. All three of these things apply to what I'm about to talk about with you today. So let's recap my history for those of you who don't know it. I came out to my friends in 2014, and I came out publicly in 2017 as transmasculine. I've been on testosterone for five years as of November 19th. I had a medically necessitated hysterectomy with total bilateral oophorectomy four years ago. I had top surgery three years ago, and uh, I'll actually be making a video about my top surgery progress in sort of like post-op and what that looks like. So I've been out for a long time. I've been seeking treatment for a long time. And starting in like 2023, maybe the end of 2022, I really began to be unsure if I wanted or even needed to continue testosterone. Some physical concerns also contributed to that consideration, uh, as well as just the political climate and general uncertainty surrounding my ability to access medication. One of the key components to my kind of thought process at this time was my partner's in the military and wherever we go is where we go. Like wherever we get put, we don't really have a choice. So if we got put somewhere like Florida, which during that period of time there was a lot of confusion as to whether or not adults would be able to access gender affirming care, that would be a problem, right? So as stated in my previous video, my dysphoria was mostly in the body not so much in the social. Since I finally passed to myself, I began to start experimenting with alternate forms of gender expression, and I became significantly less dysphoric when someone misgendered or even detonated me. I began to wonder, does this mean I'm still a man? Not a man? Something different entirely? No idea. I think that when we live with dysphoria for so long, you know, it really any symptom, right? Any painful or upsetting or disconcerting symptom, when that goes away or significantly reduces, we're left with a huge change to something that's been ever present in our life, right? And we try to figure out, one, who we are outside of that, right? Which is a big part of the journey of being trans. But two, what we do with all the space in our life now that this thing is not taking up so much of it. Does that make sense? Kind of as a result of that, and as a result of seeing my kid come out as non-binary, I ended up coming out as non-binary. And I think that probably still applies depending on how you define the term non-binary. Gender is and always will be an enigma to me. I agree that gender is a social construct. Arbitrary rules are assigned to people based off their genitalia across cultures, point blank. Some cultures have third or more genders, which is super cool. And then in the United States, transness is viewed as something that's really new, but actually historically it's been around for a long time. Book recommendation here and in the description below. But as I came to understand this year, my comprehension of gender as a social construct really doesn't stop my body or like, I guess, physical sex, like characteristic related dysphoria. So like as in relating to like sex characteristics of my body, primary, secondary, and, and so on. The gender I was assigned at birth and the sex were both F, female. I knew early on, though, that I wasn't like other girls, and female puberty was so dysphoria-inducing that I'm actually surprised I made it through that. I don't even have many memories of that time because it was just so terrible. My voice and my chest caused me the most dysphoria, and I have something of a phantom limb, if you know what I mean. These things aren't all necessary to be trans, but they are what make me trans top surgery and testosterone, and let's be honest, that hysterectomy too, all alleviated me of much of the effects of that gender or like mind and sex or body dysphoria. I'm transgender and people don't like this word, but it definitely fits for me. I'm also transsexual. 
Physically, biologically, through blood markers and the actual makeup of my physical organs, I am actually closer to male now than I was at the end of my female puberty. I'm more comfortable in my skin that way, and I'm actually even happy. So why on earth would I want to go backwards? Ultimately, I wanted to be cautious. There is this thing that happens when you have society and your upbringing constantly forcing you to second guess your own instincts. And as a trans person, we're confronted with that all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. If you have access to the internet and you're trans, you're probably being bombarded on a regular basis with stuff that questions the actuality of who you are. So I really did want to be cautious. I wanted to say, you know, maybe I don't have to go as far as I thought I did to alleviate my dysphoria. Which is funny because, you know, for five years, I've been pursuing the specific path and checking in with therapists and medical professionals who all agree with the science that says, you know, this is the right path. And so ultimately, after my own reflection, uh, I decided that stopping testosterone and going on a low dose of E just wasn't for me. It would negate the positive effects that I've had so far as a result of medically transitioning. But what about the fact that I'm more comfortable wearing feminine clothes and I'm less dysphoric when I'm misgendered? I think ultimately we have to look at the idea of self-confidence and that being like a really good thing and not, not being a sign of, you know, is there something wrong? Do I need to change the path that I'm on? My experimentation with presentation really does not negate my transmasculine identity. If anything, I think it signals the confidence that I now have in that identity. So I finally found a label that I think fits all of that information into a short-ish phrase. I'm a genderqueer trans man. I'm still a guy. I just am happy enough in my body that I actually enjoy queering up the gender a bit. And it doesn't really negate my transmasculineness or my transsexuality when somebody misgenders me or dead names me. If anything, it's just like annoying. And it just proves that that person doesn't know me or, or respect me for who I am. So what about all the side effects that I talked about in my video? The main one that a few commenters actually honed in on was the atrophy. And that's like a really important one because it was really impacting my life. It made it difficult to do my job in the adult industry. And as a person who does occasionally actually enjoy physical intimacy with other people, it made that a, a lot more difficult to indulge in. As it turns out, atrophy is not a typical side effect of being on testosterone. It is, however, a side effect of menopause. And since ditching my uterus, my ovaries, and my cervix during that medically necessary and somewhat emergent surgery in 2021, I've actually been in menopause and enjoying many of its associated side effects, including atrophy. The fix was so simple that I'm shocked no other doctor came up with it or even accepted it when I suggested it starting in 2021, <laughs> which uh, is estrace. It's a weekly suppository delivery of estrogen that I do myself at home. It doesn't impact my blood hormone levels and it just keeps things alive, vibing, I guess, thriving even downstairs. Boom. Problem solved. As for my trouble with injecting, that was also a really easy fix. We just switched delivery methods. So I use Androgel now. It's easy. I usually remember to do it in the mornings, and my insurance finally agreed to cover it since I'd tried literally everything else they covered. I received a lot of comments on the other video in comparison to my usual comment count, and I do plan to respond to them in time. But for now, I think that is going to conclude this video. I hope that it was educational for those of you watching, and, uh, you know, I won't shy away from talking about these things that maybe go against the typical everything is perfect energy that a lot of people want to put out there for the trans narrative. Life is messy. People change. We learn things about ourselves. We have to unlearn other things about ourselves. And it's okay you know, for you, trans person watching this, to sit down and do those mental experiments and wonder, is this the correct path for me? Should I do something different? I just wish that we didn't have to worry about, you know, <laughs> certain types jumping into our comments, you know, be it online or in our personal lives, saying, see, that means you're tr detransitioning, or see, that means that being trans is wrong or a lie or... Uh, a problem or a blight on society or 
fabricated or manufactured. Just because somebody is learning something about themselves doesn't, or has like a different expression of their gender than you expect them to, that doesn't mean that they're not trans, that doesn't mean that, you know, they're a part of like the quote unquote trans agenda or whatever it is that people want to assign this like malicious intent to. It just means that they're human. <laughs> and that's okay. It's okay to be a human person. You know what I mean? So I'll continue sharing my steps along this journey with you guys as I take them. Obviously, I make a lot fewer videos about it now than I did when I first came out because on the whole, things are relatively placid in terms of my transition and my gender identity. You know, I'm on testosterone. I've been on testosterone. There's not really like a ton of big changes happening because it's been like five years. I will talk about testosterone in another video coming up and I will talk about also my top surgery recovery journey and how my scars are looking now compared to a year or two years ago. And I do plan on doing a body composition video just to share. You know, I put out a video in 2018 and again in 2021. Uh, or 2022. I just want to compare, you know, the progress between then and now and talk about the effort that I've made to build the physique that I have because it didn't just happen overnight. Yeah, I don't know. I guess that's it. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more, obviously subscribe. And if you have questions or comments, leave them, you know, down below. If you think this video will help somebody, share it with them. I guess the final disclaimer that I want to put on this is just that like I'm not trying to say that this is the experience of every trans person. I'm not trying to say that a person who has chosen to detransition is wrong or anything like that. I'm not trying to uh, say that a person who identifies as trans but chooses to discontinue medical transition is wrong either. I think that these are all valid and viable paths that people should be allowed to follow because it's their bodies. You know what I mean? It's their body, their choice. Um, and this is just the choice for mine. So yeah. All right. I guess that's it. Peace out. Oh, and remember to vote. Please, dear gods, vote. Stardust makes up my mind through soon.